it already. I've got my main viewport and I've got my key viewport. The next thing that I would like to take and utilize, I'm not going to worry about the legend one for right now. What I'd like to do is incorporate the navigational arrows because those can be very helpful for me. So to take and do that, we're going to come up to the top. I'm going to insert a, an arrow that I have here. So we'll say insert block. I'm going to go out onto my hard drive here. I've got a predefined arrow that we'll be starting with. We'll say OK. And I'm just going to pick a point on the screen where I'm going to place that. And if I zoom up, there's my arrow. There's nothing uh, necessarily magical about the arrow. I've got a gradient fill that fills it in so it stands out a little bit more on the screen, but it's, it's just an outline and then the hatch itself. What I would like to do is if I'm going to add some information to this particular arrow, such that it will navigate or jump from page to page for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, placeholder or a, a field to it. So what I'm going to do, you know what, and as I'm looking at it, that uh, that hatch, as I'm seeing what you're seeing, looks kind of annoying. So I'm going to take that hatch off, and we're just going to go with the arrow outline. Let's do this. I'm going to add a placeholder to it. The placeholder, because this is going to be incorporated into a block, is going to be a, just a standard attribute. So to create an attribute, we'll come up to the top for draw. We're going to come down to block, and we're going to say define attribute. The tag that I will associate with this particular value, I'm just going to say AR uh, tag, just for arrow tag. That should work out fine. And I'm going to come down into the right of that, and I'm going to select the insert field button. And what that's going to allow me to do is insert a field, a value that will be automatically populated. Now, the field that I'm going to use, if we look on our our uh, drop-down list here of all the ones that are available is we're going to do current sheet custom. Now you have to be careful, there's current sheet custom, there's also current sheet set custom. What we want to take and set it to is current sheet. What I'm going to do is the value or the custom property that we're going to utilize, I'm going to say is top, because in this case the arrow points up. We'll go ahead and say OK. We'll go ahead and say OK. And I will go ahead and place this perhaps at the end of my arrow and then maybe slide this down. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change a couple of properties on this guy real quick. I'm not liking the uh, text that I used here. So I'm going to change the style so it's a little bit more attractive here. We'll go to Arial. And I'm going to change its justification perhaps to middle justified so that I can control it a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and move that back over onto our arrow. Okay, so the the value that we're going to utilize as part of our arrow, some people may be asking where the top come from, which other ones am I going to use? That's actually a predefined one that MathBooks will take a look for. I'll show you what the other ones are as well. Now that my one arrow is completed, I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a block. We'll come up at the top and say draw. We'll come down, we'll say block, and then make. Uh, the name of this, we'll just call it math arrow. We'll work out just fine. Uh, base point in my objects, I'll select off the screen. So we'll say OK. Base point, I've got a, a node on my arrow here that I'll use for my insertion, and then objects that make up my arrow, I will select those. And when I right click and say OK, my custom arrow block has been made and that field has turned into pound sign. Now, fortunately, if I want arrows for up, down, left, right, to different corners, I can utilize the same arrow for all of them. And what we can do is simply just go over to array. I'm going to create a polar array of my arrows. In this case, I'd like eight of them. We'll select objects as far as what we're going to use will be my arrow block. And the point that I will be rotating around, I'm just going to eyeball a point down here on the side. And we'll go ahead and say OK. So we very quickly created all of the different arrow blocks that we're going to utilize. Now, the only thing that we still have to do, all of those arrow blocks still have the top associated with it. So if I come down here to the bottom, 
and we double click on this arrow, it shows us what the value is listed down here at the bottom. If I right click on that and say edit field, I can take and set that to a different value, or in this case, it should read bottom, and we'll say OK, and we'll say OK. Now, what those values should be, let me take and call up a slide on the screen here. I'm going to call up a slide that I've pre-created that just lists what those are, and those are the values that we'll take and set those to. So basically, it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, top, bottom, left, right, top, right, top, left, the same type of insertion points. That's all I'll take and remember it is based on my uh, my text insertion points. So that's what I'll take and set them to. In the essence of time, I'm not going to worry about uh, about setting all of them. I set the top and the bottom. I may also, let's maybe just take and set a couple more here. We'll just set the right and the left. So we'll say this is going to be right so that they all don't come up with the same value. And then we'll do the same thing on the left side. We'll say edit. And we'll set that one to left and say OK. Now, I'll throw out one more thing. There might be some people that are looking at the block that was created and said, hey, you know, if you did a ray and you rotated that around, isn't some of the text values going to wind up upside down? And that is entirely correct. They will. Unfortunately, it doesn't show up quite as easily because they're pound signs. But if I wanted to flip those over using the same tool, in this case, the pound signs are upside down. If I double click on my arrow, I can go right to text options and I can change the rotation of that from 180. We'll change it to zero, say OK, and then that one flips over. If we look at this, it's a simple 45 degrees. Right now it's at basically 225. So we'll set that to 45. And then we can go around and do the same thing for the other one. All right, so the top ones should be okay. The bottom ones we might have to tweak. Once again, in the, the essence of time, I'm not going to walk through and do each one of those. But we've gone ahead and we've got our arrows created. Now I just need to take and place them. So if I select an arrow, I can drag it up, and using my object snap here, I can take and set them at the different positions on my viewport that I would like to see them when I use them for navigation. So basically, I'm just clicking on the insertion point, and I'm dragging them around to the outside, all right, to where I'd like to see them. Now my arrows, as you look at them, they're, you know, they're kind of big. We'll pan up here so I can see the bottom. The arrows are kind of big. We could, because they're blocks, we can have them any shape, size, orientation, you know, whatever we want them to look like. We'll go ahead and, and set those down here. All right. So having said that, my, uh, my template is ready to go. I'm maybe going to we'll just drop this down just a touch so my arrows aren't interfering with my border. And we'll call that good for right now. So I've made my template. I'm ready to go. All I need to do now is bring up my task pane from within that. I've got that conveniently docked over on the side here. And normally, where we typically see the display manager as being the main tab, we're going to come down. We'll take an access map book from the tab right here. And if I select that, the option that we're going to take and use is tools. And what tools will do is it will allow us to take and identify the different components or the different uh, placeholders in our template. So we'll go to tools. We'll say identify template placeholders. And then we just walk down the list and fill out the values as we saw or looked at before. Main viewport. I'm going to say select placeholder and then touch my main viewport. D view. We'll go ahead and select that. Set my placeholder. We'll set that off to the side over here. Legend. I'm not going to have one of those, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, adjacent arrow block. We can go ahead and set placeholders. We can grab these guys. Actually, we'll grab, uh, grab them in a group. We'll be a little bit faster and then deselect my viewport here. So all those have been selected. And then finally, title block, we'll select that and say placeholder. And if I click on my border around the outside, I can associate the title block for my, my map book. All right. So really, start to finish, that's all there is to the, the map book template. You'll see the convenience of the arrows here in a moment. If we wanted to uh, elect to not utilize the arrows, basically once we finish the two views.